Laugh 4. Hilda says she loves courtroom dramas, and Sabrina says it'd be nice if they could all participate in a real courtroom battle. So they get excited to defend Ambrose in courts from a jaywalking summons. But none of them are lawyers. They'd have to lie to be allowed to do that. And they want to know what they're doing. I guess it's not really about helping Ambrose. Ambrose says he's guilty and should pay the fine. Which is surprisingly nice behavior for a witch when witches in the 70s series are encouraged to be evil. Then he says he shouldn't let them defend him because they know nothing about law and order. If he knows this, why would he agree anyways? Hilda says that witches always lay down the law and give the orders. Sabrina says they've also seen every episode of a few courtroom shows, which would obviously not be accurate for the sake of being more dramatic and entertaining to watch. For some reason, he still lets them go with them to court anyways without hiring a real lawyer, even though he still wishes they had let him pay the fine. I guess he knows he's outnumbered by omnipotent witches, so it's safer to just humor them. Hilda assumes the judge will be sympathetic to their cause because he's wearing a black robe like a witch, even though she should know that mortals don't believe in witches. Also, if Hilda's dressed like a witch in any way, you'd think the judge wouldn't put up with that. The prosecutor asks Ambrose if he denies that he jaywalked. Sabrina says the prosecutor is badgering the defendant. I think what happened instead is that the judge would be the one to ask Ambrose, how do you plead? Sabrina summons some badgers in front of everyone in the room. All that happens is the judge bangs his gavel wanting order. Hilda uses magic to change outfits and asks him in an apron what he'd like to order to eat. Zelda tries to leave with the latter because she wants to take the case to a higher court. The jury actually laughs, probably because there's been multiple visual punts in a row, but they would still be freaked out by all the magic. And the judge says he's had enough and tells the defendant to rise, rather than just declaring a mistrial because of his incompetent lawyers. Sabrina asks the judge how high I'd like Ambrose to rise and makes him levitate. The judge miraculously dismisses the case because of insanity, because he'll be insane if the case continues. He should have said, because I'm already insane. I don't think he's allowed to do this. But if his reaction was a part of the levitation spell, it makes sense. Why didn't Sabrina do this right away? Ambrose says he never wants to go through that experience again. Why? He hates puns that badly? Then out of nowhere he gets told off by a cop for littering. With what? Why did he have that? So he gets given a summons, and Sabrina wants to fight it in court again, and he begs her to let him pay the fine. This story was interesting and surprisingly funny at some points, but also annoying because for the most part, Sabrina's family just looked stupid in court, having no interest in even trying to be good lawyers. Which makes sense for Sabrina because after she was asked how the prosecutor was badgering Ambrose, she wouldn't have had a proper convincing answer, so might as well give up and start making puns. I never knew what visual humor was happening next. So it's an engaging story, and them taking so long instead of instantly brainwashing the judge to dismiss the case was not only more entertaining, but also explained as them wanting to have fun in a courtroom because they like courtroom dramas. They're just fooling around, and I have to assume that it's because of a spell that the judge dismissed the cut and dry case instead of declaring a mistrial. Obviously, one of the major problems with the story was that nobody freaked out at seeing magic. And then Ambrose looks stupid because he doesn't want to go through that again, even though it successfully got him off. Archie 354 Hilda says that a lot more people than she expected showed up at her party, and she tells someone near a catering van that she needs more food. Why wouldn't she zap some up? Even if she's out of magic, and so is every witch in the house, there's been a few times where Sabrina's family had a genie's lamp. So why don't they get a genie to summon some food for free? He says they'll know how much food they need after he takes a head count. Sabrina says that won't help him, and for some reason, she's casually smiling while telling a mortal that some of their guests have two heads. It'd be more in character for Hilda than her. But I'd rather her be fun-loving sometimes than the opposite. Archie Giant Series 579 Sabrina introduces Hilda to her new date, a bodybuilder, because this is an era where Harvey's confusingly ignored. At least explained that he moved. Hilda says her nephew bodybuilds too and we see him near a Frankenstein. Archie Giant Series 581 Zelda and Sabrina are picking out Christmas trees, and Sabrina says her tree picked her. 
Someone working at the place hates the tree and tells them to take it away fast for free. Not even trying to get money for some reason. And Zelda thanks him and casually flies on it with Sabrina. If they're polite enough to thank him and say Merry Christmas, why did they fly away in front of him? Betty's Diary 15 Ambrose sees that it's raining out and Sabrina wonders if he needs an umbrella. I assume that the reason he won't just summon an umbrella is that he wants to conserve magic. And he wants Sabrina to conserve magic too. But he really had no excuse for not having his own umbrella to begin with. Sabrina warns him that Hilda hexed her umbrella in case someone else would try to use it on her and forced her to take the effort of sapping up another one. Ambrose doesn't believe her about this for no reason, and the umbrella itself sends rain at him. Jughead 1987-4 Sabrina asks for help from a spirit of light, and yet she turns a mouse into an elephant. So what does that have to do with light? Magic always creates light. But this is the first time she said Spirit of Light. Hilda asks her if there's any more difficult tricks she'd like her to teach her. That's not a difficult trick. She'd just imagine one thing as another. Then she asks her how she can make her phone ring when she wants a date. She's brainwashed people plenty of times throughout the series effortlessly. It wouldn't be a thing she'd need help with. Laugh 5 Sabrina gives Hilda a bubble top broom to protect her from the elements when she flies. It's a reference to the broommobile she flew in one of the Archie's Madhouse stories, Sister Sorceress. Since she has a soft spot for Sabrina, Hilda's nice enough to call it thoughtful instead of just pointing out that witches can cast spells on their brooms to protect them from the elements anyways. Sabrina gives Zelda the microwave cauldron she always wanted, but I guess it was too cheap to buy and she wanted Sabrina to buy it for her, and that's why she didn't conjure it up. And also she wanted to save magic. Then Hilda gets uncharacteristically excited at seeing Santa's sleigh outside her window, tells Sabrina to grab the thermos, and they fly over to his sleigh and give him hot cocoa and cookies. Then Hilda notices that his stock of toys is running low, and summons a ton of toys without going over it with him first. When the toys he has are ones that were specifically requested and these weren't. He thanks them and implies that they do this a lot. Then Sabrina spots some homeless people down in the city. I found it more admirable when it was just her doing those good deeds because she was being independent and rebelling against her aunts. What's the point of having Hilda in the comic if she's going to be just like her? They notice that there's a family spending Christmas Eve sleeping in a car. Hilda says that her penetrating witch's eyes spots a couple of vacant rooms in a posh hotel. Zelda warps the family to one of those. Shouldn't it be obvious that they'll get in trouble because they didn't pay to sleep in there? So none of the hotel staff would recognize them? And there's no reason that the mother wouldn't believe her kid about this when she's awake enough to respond. So she'd notice that she's in a comfy bed lying down. Then we see some people in a car with the words Daily Blade Press on it and somehow both of them believed the tip they got that there's a weird witch-like family living in Sabrina's house. To be fair, they aren't saying that they believe they're actual witches. Hilda gets asked to show them how she spends Christmas Eve. Hilda and Zelda tell them what they did in a vague way without mentioning magic. He thinks the good that they did was boring and apologizes for bothering them. And somehow assumes that he has the wrong family. Even though they're clearly dressed like witches, like the tip would have said. It's not like mortals are a threat to witches, so this doesn't have to happen. Hilda wonders if they'd like to take pictures of them singing Christmas carols with their friends. Something you'd think she'd be opposed to because it's just another mortal holiday. One of the men turns them down, and his friend says their editor wants something unusual. The story ends with a family singing carols with monsters, and Hilda somehow doesn't think this is unusual from the perspective of a mortal. I can understand witches who spend most of their time on Earth celebrating Christmas, but there's no reason monsters would care enough to sing carols with them. This was a story about Sabrina and her family helping people on Christmas Eve with their magic. Confusing me as it establishes that her aunts are fine with using magic for good, and even like singing Christmas carols, when Christmas is just another mortal holiday. Then some reporters go to their home but fail to publicly humiliate Sabrina because they decide to leave way too early, even though they still have the witch costumes that they're reported to have. I expected the story to show us negative consequences to their magic, 
like to Hilda giving Santa a bunch of toys that weren't requested by anyone, maybe weighing down his sleigh too much, and it would also be depressing to see the homeless family get kicked out of the hotel, but I don't know what happened to them. I hope we're supposed to assume they snuck out without getting caught. Jughead 5 We see someone with a cowboy hat enjoying something he's eating, and some friend of his says it's the closest thing to his chili. Then it turns out Zelda and Sabrina are making a brew, and Hilda requests two more bulls, which apparently taste like chili because they're magical. That's interesting. It's nice to see these witches with jobs. I hate that the panels aren't just squares, so I saw the final panel first because it's big and demanding attention. Betty's Diary 16 Sabrina tells Hilda that she's had fun at the witch department store and is about to leave. Then Hilda says she got a parking ticket because she parked her broom for longer than an hour. And Sabrina tells her that next time she should read the sign more carefully. Which makes it make more sense because the broom parking words were bigger than the other words and she just glanced at it. I love how often brooms are portrayed as like vehicles. Laugh 6 Rare Scare Someone I don't know rents a super gross horror movie for Sabrina because he hopes she'll jump into his arms for protection from it. He thinks of Sabrina as that new girl he just met. So, this story is in a parallel universe where Sabrina just moved to Riverdale as a teenager. And she's dating this guy with brown hair instead of Harvey. I say that because she somehow thinks a gory movie sounds like fun to watch with him. That's not in character at all. She wouldn't want to see people get hurt. She's somehow unhappy that her aunts aren't home. And Sabrina laughs at seeing Freddy Krueger because she thinks his razor fingers look ridiculous. I liked that the comic made it so obvious which specific movie she was talking about, and it's a famous one so I'll care. It makes sense that she's not easily scared because she's a powerful witch and is used to seeing monsters from the other realm. Then someone rings the doorbell. It makes no sense that a grumbling other realm person with multiple arms showed up at Hilda's front door for a party. I'm just so used to the 90s sitcom with its other realm closet. Him showing up at the front door is just begging to expose the existence of supernatural beings to mortals. When Del wants to hide them from them. Why did he even get invited to the party if he can't talk? Sabrina says that he must have his dates mixed up as the guy with her thinks he must be seeing things. It was obvious from the start that Sabrina wouldn't be scared, because he expected her to be. Sabrina thinks it's ridiculous that the monster attacks the girl while they're dreaming. Well, that is ridiculous. You'd think she would have erased his memory of seeing Igor, because normally she cares about hiding that she's a witch. Another out of character moment happens, as when a monster out of nowhere says that he's hungry, she's not upset at all that he said this in front of a mortal, and just tells him that they only feed him twice a day. You'd think she'd be generous to him, because that's her character. Why would she force anything to live in a dungeon? This thing has no reason to be here. He's just a one-story joke. Sabrina, instead of erasing his memory, is completely honest with them out of nowhere. She says he's just vacationing with her briefly before he returns to his haunted castle. That's not a good vacation. Then Hilda shows up as a ghost, politely apologizing for barging in when they're watching TV. There's no reason for a witch to use astral projection because they can just teleport. She just teleport here. But I do love this anyways because it's more interesting. She just got bored of constantly teleporting. She and Sabrina are somehow fine with this happening in front of a mortal too. It makes sense because his memory can be erased, but it's still out of character. She says she forgot her purse and leaves, apologizing for the interruption. I'd expect Zelda to be the polite one, but whatever. The whole story would make more sense if Sabrina explained at the start that she wants to scare this guy away because she loves Harvey and he's coming on too strong, but she's not this mean. She just tell him she's not interested. I guess she did and he's here because he can't take a hint. And she's so against brainwashing, unless it's a love spell, that she'd rather torture him like this than just point at him to make him not attracted to her anymore. She just has to give him a drink and tell him that it's made of bat wings and rattlesnakes. She wouldn't tell him what it's made of. She did this to calm him down. I guess it can only calm him down so much. But why? It's a potion. So the story ends with people at the video store assuming that he was scared by the horror movie instead of Sabrina. This story was at least interesting. 
but I'm forced to assume it takes place in a parallel universe to explain how confusing it is. Sabrina is completely out of character here by not caring about the fact that supernatural beings are being made obvious to a mortal over and over again when she's trying to watch a movie with him that he hoped would make her jump into his arms. She's not scared of the movie because she's smart enough to know how ridiculous it is and used to monsters. She's supposed to be nice too. She just keep erasing his memory. But that wouldn't be as funny as him getting so scared that he runs out of the house. Was she just trying to get him to stop trying to get her to date him? I wish she explained that this was her plan at the start. But even then, she just brainwashed him into finding her unattractive. Now be this mean to him. That'd be less evil than letting him remember a bunch of scary things that would traumatize him. Why would Hilda throw a party? Why would her friend Igor out of nowhere who can't talk show up at the front door instead of warping here? Why did Hilda not just warp here? At least Sabrina justified that Clonk is here because he's vacationing with him. But why would he think of a dungeon where he only gets fed twice a day as vacation? That turned out to be a really awful vacation. I guess they're punishing him for being too gluttonous or something if they're being that way to him. But that's not explained. Why is she on a date with him and not Harvey? This story made no sense. RJ356 Harvey shows up again for the first time in years as someone Sabrina is interested in dating. He and another girl look interested in each other. So Sabrina casts a spell to make them have a huge fight, but we don't see it. Instead, the writer for once has the self-awareness to have Della congratulate her on abusing her magic. And Sabrina's smart enough to instantly thank her and act like she did it to get Harvey in trouble. The story ends with her kissing Harvey, thinking that she's catching him on the rebound. It's not like I'm starting to date Trudy's while he was absent for years. She could have cast the spell the instant Trudy first flirted with him. Maybe she didn't care enough to because she was sick of him at the time, and now she's changed her mind. At the same time this came out, there was a comedy page in Life with Archie 266 where Sabrina's aunts had bow ties on their hats, which I already viewed in Sabrina's Holiday Spectacular 3. Archie's pals and gals 196. Sabrina looks at an ATM and says that everywhere you look, people are doing things quicker. Somehow she doesn't like today's hectic pace, and somehow she disapproves when Hilda uncharacteristically wisens up and uses a handheld mixer to stir a cauldron faster. What got them to finally do that? Betty Me 166. Sabrina says to someone that her aunt decided to help her make dolls for charity, even though Hilda's opposed to doing good things for mortals. Oh, she puts pins in them. That explains why she agreed to it. But she shouldn't look confused. It was surprisingly nice of Sabrina to say that she did marvelous work anyways. Everything's Archie 135. Sabrina tells Hilda that the teenagers next door don't look like a rock group. Hilda uses magic and turns them to stone so that they'll look like a rock group. This would be more dark, but thankfully Sabrina can just turn them back to normal or guilt her into it. And we know she'd do that. Her doing this to them only makes sense because she's so old-fashioned that she wouldn't like noisy rock music beside her house. And even if you like rock music, you'd still find it to be noise pollution so close to your house. RG357 Night Sprites Sabrina's having fun hiking because she likes how everything around her looks, while her aunts hate it. Zelda's just as unsympathetic as Hilda. They end up making a wrong turn and going into Swampland. So her aunts think it's beautiful because it's eerie and scary. I'm glad there was a happy ending after the first panel. I don't know why her aunts agreed to come with her. Betty's Diary 17 Just because Hilda and Zelda are witches, that somehow means they find the spooky moors of Scotland the perfect place to visit for being spooky. Zelda likes the haunted castles as well. And Hilda conveniently sees the Loch Ness Monster. Then they get scared away by the music of a bagpipe player that was playing outside. He wouldn't be doing that there by himself. And it's not like it always sounds bad, either. Sabrina would have recognized that it was bagpipe music, at least. Wouldn't one of these ants have lived in England at some point before the United States were established? So they should have heard bagpipe music before, because England's right next to Scotland. 